Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to show you a very simple basic technique that opens up a whole new dimension of creative possibilities. So let me show you what I mean. OK, so here I am in a 1920-1080 project, 24 frames a second, duration 5 seconds. None of that is terribly relevant. But anyway, I thought I'd tell you. So what I'm going to do is import this photo here from pexels.com, link in the description. Just going to scale him up a little bit, give him a little bit of color correction. OK, so then what we're going to do is we're going to make a new group at the top and we're going to put this group into this group. So we've got this nest here. And then to this bottom group, I'm going to add filters, distortion and polar. And I'm going to add a polar to the top group as well. And what I want to do is come into this first one here and turn on this button here. And you'll see that doing so, we kind of get back to normal. And what this means is that we've created this little nest in which we can perform Cartesian to polar conversion stuff. And it's going to look really very interesting. What actually happens with this conversion is that anything that is positional becomes rotational. And we can just check that out by using a fairly standard distortion filter. So I'm going to go with glass block. And if I just bypass these two polar filters, you can see this is the normal glass block. It's horizontal, vertical. But if I turn back on my two polar filters, we've now got this radial effect. So a left-right effect has turned into a rotational effect. So not the greatest of examples, but there are plenty of others we could look at. I think I might just quickly look at insect eye. And let's just increase the refraction so we can see border size. Again, if I turn off the two polar filters, you can see that that was just a row upon row column upon column, but we turn it back on again. And now we've got this nice radiating effect. So basically anything that involves that kind of linear distortion or whatever, we can adapt with this process. So for example, if I use stripes, again, you're seeing we're getting a radial effect rather than a linear one. And the angle doesn't now adjust the angle. It creates this spiral, which is kind of quite interesting. And then if I offset the degrees, we get this sort of uh, slit scan type effect. So that's quite a useful one. What else can we do? In the stylized group, there are plenty that we can play with that are really quite interesting. So let's have a go at maybe line screen. And so that creates this. If we just zero out that rotation, we get this sort of straight radial line screen effect like that. And again, if we adjust the angle, we get that swirling effect. So what else can we do? Come back into the stylized category. Pixelate is a really good one. And then if we increase the scale like this, you can see that we're getting this really interesting kind of radial pixelation. And I've done a tutorial that uses this technique and it makes for some really great looks, I think, especially when you start animating things. So that's pixelate. But where things get particularly interesting is when we add a bump map filter to this group. So let's just give ourselves something to displace with. I'm going to use this checkerboard drop it into this group at the back here. Let's just turn off that group. In actual fact, I'm just going to put in a color solid into a group in between there, just in case we see through. So I'm going to just make this black like that. So let us use the checkerboard group as the source for the bump map like this. And you see what we're going to get if we just increase that bump map amount. We get this kind of dartboard effect, which is really quite interesting. Whereas obviously the checkerboard on its own looks like that. So what else can we use? So let's try stripes. So stripes gives us these rays like that. And what's another one we can use? So the ones that are not particularly good are ones like concentric polka dots and shapes and whatever. So anything that's already radial is not going to give us anything terribly interesting. Uh, manga lines, for example, as well. Grid is a good one there. Let's look at grid. Let's increase the width and height a bit like that. Maybe reduce the line width. But this is a really nice one. I really like the way grid works. And notice that if we animate the Y offset, we get this radial animation. Whereas conversely, if we animate the X offset, we get this rotation of the grid. So that's a good thing to bear in mind that the position of the source is actually going to affect 
either that kind of radial movement or this rotational movement. So let's look at another one. I do like Japanese pattern, which gives us this is nice sort of scalloped effect like that. Let's maybe just increase this amount quite a bit like that. And that sets the direction to not 90, but zero. And then that joins up a bit better like that. So that's quite a nice one. So again, if we animate the center of that, we get that radiating effect like that. Again, if we animate these X, we get just a rotation. There's got to be some more. I'm going to come back to noise in just one moment because that's a really good one. So Trichet tiles is quite good. There are a few options here that you can use under this menu here. So I said we would look at noise. So let's quickly look at that. And what that does, if we just adjust this bump map amount just here, you can see that if we go like that, we get this explosion outwards, which could be really useful for something. And just before we finish, I want to point out that instead of using bump map, we could use distortion and refraction. Again, use that group as our source. Let's try Trichet tiles. Well, let's skip down through all of these. You can see we get a different sort of displacement using uh, refraction. You can have quite a lot of it. We need to have that kind of soft, glassy look as well. And finally, I want to point out that scrape can be quite useful as well. Let's turn off that refraction. So if we adjust the scrape position like that, you see we get these rays like this. So this basic technique opens up a whole new dimension of fascinating creative possibilities. Anyway, I hope that's been an interesting one. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.